Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller. And I'm Mark Hyde. And on today's episode, we have a very exciting guest with us, Morgan, who's going to be telling his story about leaving the LBGTQ plus lifestyle to follow Jesus. Mark, are you ready Dude, for this conversation? I'm so stoked. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's, Let's go. go. It's so weird it's not awkward, having the, bro. not having that title screen in the video. There's so to hide many our faces. different things that are going on tonight <laughs> that are different. Like, let's think about it. Okay, so our position is different. We, if did. you're watching on YouTube, so what, what I've learned is when we're having interviews, my Mark, fault, guys, and we're sitting. Typically, we're sitting this way. Mark ideas. likes to look this way towards the the monitor. And so like, it's you fools like, are here, but I'm looking over here. I'm like, well, so I'm looking like a fool. I'm going to re reposition the table. So <laughs> at least we're a little bit closer when we're, when we're watching our friend Morgan. Yep, yep. So when I look up, it's like not looking like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just a little weird. off still, but it's not as but bad for the YouTube family, man. There's no cover screen. No, actually, I kind of like no. how close we are to I, you guys. I kind of right like it too. I like how close we are. Yeah. Now you can see the door behind us. We'll have to maybe adjust some stuff, but yeah, we'll probably, I mean, over time. I like this guy. I look like I'm talking right I, to you. I think I want to mount, move that and mount it over here. So we still have the the mm -hmm. sign saying, in the center. I like how close. Like I feel yeah. like I can touch you. Like, oh, that was can, that was a little a that was a little strange. Either way, friend. dude, it's been a weird week in the Hyde household, man. Really? Why? Uh, oh, because baby Lennox baby is on Lennox his way. Is, well, well, he's, he's technically off. here when we launch. Yeah, he's already here, dude. Now. I walked but. into the bedroom this morning, right? And right. Like, like I, I like. Okay, so the way. Uh -oh, it was a little uh -oh, out of my ears. Okay, so all right. the way our house is set up is when you walk down into the basement, the, the the landing area, it's just kind of a little seating area. That's where my office is. And then our bedroom is right on the other side. So like I was working, I walked into the bedroom to get something. Right. And all of a sudden there's three suitcases on my bed packed with Lennox's stuff, bum, mama bum, stuff, bum. and soon to be daddy stuff. <laughs> that, and I'm just like, holy crap, what? That was the, that was your hint. Beth was saying, uh, dude, oh, you better get no, back. No, see, Beth doesn't <laughs> give hints, bro. Beth is just like, this is what it's going to be. This is how we're going to do it. So let's just get to it. <laughs> I love it. So it's just a wild week for that. And so we got kid number eight on the way recording already here for time of release. Yep. And um, we also made sure there's no, no more kids coming in. So it's been a wild week, man. It's like a wild, wild <laughs> west out here. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit strange this week for you in the Hyde house. For the Fuller house, uh, the most interesting th thing happened what is in the our most, house. Okay. Uh, uh, somebody, n I mean, totally oh, yeah. obliterated our mailbox last night. So we're sitting on the couch. Which, 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 which pause, there's no snow, so it's not a snowplow. No, no it's it's completely it's dry. It's not a snowplow. And so it, it, we're sitting on the couch. The girls and Janiel had oh, just gotten back. Oh, you guys were back. awake. Yeah, the girls and Janiel had just gotten back from ballet, and we're sitting there doing devotions, and we hear a pop. I'm like, what was that noise? And Piper said the funniest thing ever. She goes, I think it was a frog jumping up against the window. <laughs> I'm like, no, honey, it wasn't a frog going, oh, man. going up against the window. Your, your princess watching but too much Disney. I That's Luciana and the Frog I right there. She's never seen that movie. But I couldn't I figure I out. I haven't seen it either. I couldn't figure out what the heck that noise was. Well, I got up this morning to go to work at, you know, 4 o'clock this morning. You walk around morning. the house with your gun in your bat like, I'm going to I'm like. And I, I walk out and I go, my mailbox ain't there. <laughs> I look over, and it's in my neighbor's yard. So they must have been flying to hit that mailbox and shoot it over to my but neighbor's it, yard. The only way someone could hit it is if they had like a big old truck with like so if, mirrors off the side. If you look at my yard, you can see the tre uh, the the tire treads. I didn't I I didn't notice until I walked up and I and walked past like your mailbox and I'm like, what the heck is your mailbox? It doing looks now? like they hit it dead on. And I'm like, well, I bet their vehicle screwed up because it was good wood. It wasn't like rotted wood. It no. was like good, good wood. I was confused. I'm looking at it. Like, it doesn't like, look rotten. But so, that's, so, yeah. so someone legit, like, I had Sucks. no idea. That either, you, either it was intentional whoa. or somebody was a little tipsy on something. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was uh, gone. And Janiel was in the house not driving. No. So yeah, it wasn't yeah, Janiel's fault. Janiel doesn't drink anyway. So oh, I was just thinking hit the mailbox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, she would have told me. So that's true. But yeah. So, hey, dude, I am so excited. I don't want to hold up no, this I, podcast we, we too much because conversation today. I'm so excited. So Morgan is a listener of RTC, has just started listening. Uh, I think he said just prior to November, around November nah, we'll let him tell of in 2022. We'll let him tell that part. Uh but he reached out to us and said, hey, guys, I have an interesting topic to tell you guys about. Um, and I, I don't want to take too much, but 
Nope, nope, don't take too much. I think people know based on the title. Yeah, it's basically about about coming out of the LBGTQ lifestyle. And, uh, dude, I'm so excited. But before we can do that, we got a few housekeeping items to take care of. One, what kind of coffee are we drinking tonight? You read the labor. I Mount something from Peru. Mount what the heck? What? Mount Comfort. Mount, Mount Comfort. Comfort. You called yeah. it My Comfort Coffee. I'm like, this ain't no My Comfort Coffee, It bro. was My Comfort because it's, it's from Peru. Dude, this crap Shout is good. Shout out now, to Joe Ferrer. So, so I'm getting to the point now where... so 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 See, I've been my, making it stronger because like the first couple of times we were over here and I, we were drinking, you were like, man, it's so weak. And I'm the, like... The Peru stuff or just in yeah, general? No, yeah, no, the Peru stuff. The Peru so stuff, stuff like, you I'm gotta gonna, make strong. I'm like, I'm you gonna, gotta make, make I'm it strong. pound it down them. It, this is good. It's good. So, so I've been starting to notice. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to tell the difference now. Just at looking at grounds about what flavors to expect, yeah. how dark, how light. Because well, and the region it comes from, you can really tell what oh, notes not, are going to be. I'm not in quite there, there yet. I'm oh, not okay. quite at the region part yet. You, you but get to, I'll train you into yeah, bougie ways. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. But <laughs> so I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a nice dark. And I was, I was like, it smells velvety. So it kind of has that it's cocoa not, though, flavor. It's not velvety, but it doesn't. It's not that mouthful velvety flavor that you don't like. It's got a full body. And a punch to it, but no velvety. But it's really, really good. Actually, it's a Costco coffee. A little velvety. There's a little velvet. It's a Costco. I can taste it. So I've been doing a lot of light roast into the point where I've done oh, so much okay, yeah. so like I'm still organic in the light roast that now when I go back to drink dark, which my brother-in-law bought me a whole bunch of dark coffees. Well, this isn't dark. This it's is like medium. a night and day. This is closer to dark, though, I think. No. This is like, I think this, this is closer this to This is dark. a straight-up full city roast. Which is right before... This is dark, you got a right? full city roast, full city roast plus, and then a French roast, which okay. is your dark. Okay. And then you have your espresso roast. Yep. I got so. some Italian roast sitting at home. But yep. so either way, so it, we're drinking Peruvian coffee in honor of Joe and Kimberly. Delish. Which by this point, I, I think Kimberly's coming back this summer. Well, and Joe. And the is, kids. Is he? We, should, we, get, we need to hook up for a, a follow up exactly. interview. Exactly. But we had an interview to get to tonight. So yes, we we're drinking some right. great Peruvian stuff. Well, I'll read the review. Because, you know, you did the intro. You well, go, I gotta, I'm, I'm here for the ride with gotta, the listeners tonight, my dude. I want you to be able to say what your your words. Use your words. Why? Because it's a Gen Z. Because it's Gen Z, it's bro. It's not Gen Z. It's, it's a Gen it's, Z representative. It's Gen Z. You got to say it. Gen Z. Gen Z? Like Gen Z. It's like one word, like Gen Z. Oh, like by the millennial way. Millennial Gen Z. I'm... <laughs> Real fast before you get into it. You're going to boomer me? Gen Z. No. Well, I am a boomer, and it's so bad that even Scott knew something I didn't know. <laughs> like Pastor Scott? Yeah. Like the OG boomer? Yeah. So he was talking. I forget what we were talking about, discipleship or something like that. He's like, yeah, sometimes, you know, I, I got to really work on getting all the deets. I go, the what? <laughs> no, he did And he goes, the deets. I go, I'm so proud of that, man. I go, what the heck does that mean? He goes, you don't know what the deets means? Did you hang out with Mark? I said, I have no idea. The he deets, goes, the bro. details, man, the deets. Dude, I go, it's wow, like. Wow, I really am a boomer. I've only watched a few episodes, but it's like, 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 uh, well, actually, well, there's part of like New Girl where he starts like shortening all his words. So like, oh, sash, yeah. and this, he has to put something like money in the jar. I've only seen a handful of episodes, but and Beth looked at me and went, that's you. And I'm like, 29? I just have to, disclaimer, dad, Janiel's dad, dad. No use in that because he'll start going the around. Deets? He'll make up his own words. Give me the deets, bro. When we used to do like short form text with him, oh, he would just start brother. being like B R C K five seven nine, and it's like, what does that mean? He goes, well, this means this, and he spells That's out like this whole thing. paragraph, and I'm like, well, that doesn't mean anything to anybody but you. That's like the old people when they say like, sorry <laughs> for your you, loss, Dad. lol. Love you. I, he did it. Laugh to out me. loud. He did no, it to mess lots with of us. Love, but you know, he, he did it to mess. But with either us, way, though. so this is from apparently the Gen Z representative. The representative of all. When was it posted? Representative. Re representative. Uh, this was posted back on November 1st. November so 1st. So it's been a little bit. Yeah. It says, hey guys, I'm really thankful for this podcast because I can depend on it being there every day when I need a little pit me up. That's that's what we that's what we use for you, my dude. When I so am down. being a male team, dude, can we just say <laughs> the fact that we were like our OG podcast, we we're like trying to reach teenagers out, teenagers are listening to it. Makes my heart happy. <laughs> Being a male teen, I have a hard time with lust and other non-related mm. issues. So I got excited when I saw an episode that was based on the topic that I could relate to. Thanks for everything you two do. Keep up the good work, and I wish you both well. Well, we well, thank you, appreciate my dude. that. Gen Z a representative. All I'm saying is you got to get to the rest of the Gen Z boys and girls up in here, man. We got to sure. fold this place up. Like Shelby. Shelby's a big-time listener. She's Shelby Gen Fisher, Z. Yeah. Girl yeah. owns her own photography and videography business. Before I up. was even like graduated high school. That's what's up. So we got some good All Gen right. Z people in the mix, but today we're not here to talk about Gen Z. We're not. We're, we're here, here to, to have talk an interview. About, <laughs> we just keep going back. Keep to going that. back to it. So our friend Morgan, we're going to bring him on, uh, but a quick little introduction for oh. Morgan before we bring him on, because you know that's... And we did it all in 10 minutes. Let's go. 
Let's go. Meet love. All right. <laughs> Morgan belongs to a support group that helps same sex attraction or SSA for short. This is a safe place to be able to hold each other accountable and also work through issues together. They have two rules in the SSA group, protect the privacy of those who do not wish to express their struggles with the church and to protect the members from any temptations among the members of the group. So please help me. Welcome. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Oh, okay. Let me slow. Hang on, Morgan. I'm ready. I'm ready now. Our wonderful, inspiring guest, Morgan. Welcome to the podcast. (laughs) have you been planning to put the applause at the beginning of it the whole time no that was just total randomness i have i I I have so much i got so much all right you're done no one more no he just randomly goes to it sometimes (laughs) listen sometimes you just need to be random thank you you. interesting thank you that's what i've been saying this man ain't random it's what (laughs) <laughs> Morgan 50 50 agreement uh, he's been a little random since I've met him so uh, I mean that's true no you I'm are pr- random I'm pretty You're random a boomer random I just broke out in Josh Groban what more do you want uh, Wait, Michael Buble the breaking out in Josh Groban you didn't hear me going when I am down oh no. I just no, no, he said it under my voice and I just ignored it and kept rolling see oh. you, you have to listen intently to Mark because sometimes I throw a little something in there underneath that nobody knows and okay. I don't try to sing anymore because it's always off key. <laughs> but okay. Morgan, thank you so much for being with us today on the podcast. We are so excited to on have you. On the pod. You. Thank you. I am super excited as well. It is truly an honor. I'm really thankful. So how long have you been listening to RTC? I, I was kind know. of uh, hinting at it in the beginning, but uh, we want to hear from you, my good man. <clears throat> so roughly I've been listening to it since the end of 2022. Mm-hmm. Um Uh, I work overnight as a security officer, and one day whenever I was heading to the gym, um, it was like 6, 10 in the morning, um, I was like, you know, I want to listen to a podcast. Um, And I had a couple people that had suggested some, but it didn't really hit any strings for me. Um, And so um, I got onto Spotify, and um, I searched good Christian podcasts, um, and... uh, within like the first five options that Spotify suggested, I saw a real talk and I was like, huh, that's interesting. And so I opened it and I saw that it was y'all talking about like real topics, real um, issues that one that the church may have difficulty with talking about amongst themselves. Um, Like, I think one of the, one of the, first podcast that I actually truly enjoyed was the Disney podcast and oh, uh, yes. um, how, uh, how the church should approach how Disney has been producing their movies and the messages behind it and stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm a big Disney fan and I really like Guilty. this. This is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> we are too. <laughs> um, and so I started listening to it. It's, it's really become um, a routine for me. Mm. Um, uh, so I listen to a daily devotional, which does a worship song and then breaks it down on the way to work. Um, mm. Once it's done. Oh, I'll wait, wait, wait. What, what podcast it? is that? I want to look that up. Um, it's called The Daily Devo. Um, shout out to The, the Daily Devo. The uh, daily it wasn't intending, Devo. but there you go. Props out there. Um, but it, it'll it play a song at the beginning. You can actually listen to it with or without the song. Um, and the app that they have for cell phones is super simple. It's literally three buttons. One of them is to play devotional with the song. One of them is to play the devotional without. And then it has the option, I believe, to where you can actually just read the devotional itself. Oh, um, that's awesome. Um, so for me, being really big with music and uh, love listening, um, I, um, one of my best friend's little sister suggested it to me years ago. And so I started getting back into the habit of listening to it on the way to work. And then I'll put on... Um, my Hillsong radio on Spotify and I'll just listen to that to the rest of the way of work. Mm. But then in the mornings, <clears throat> whenever I'm heading from work to the gym, um, I'll put on y'all's podcast and I'll listen to it uh, just because um, it's really, it's encouraging, but I also enjoy learning y'all's viewpoints on the topics, um, especially whenever it came to uh, the podcast that y'all had the high schoolers and college students come in talking about the difficulty of them sharing their faith in the public school system or in college and the difficulties that they would have with it. Um, It was really, really cool to be able to first see their boldness with it, but also to 
um, see how God was able to mold them from where each individual student was into this person that they had become. So right. um, it was, it's super cool. And I, I love it. It's one of my, one of my favorite things to do on the way to the gym. That's so. awesome. And it's so wild, man. When I think about that episode we did, that was with Colby yeah, I'm and looking, uh, I'm looking Carly, up which episodes it Eli was. and Jagger. It's like Eli and Eli and Gara. Uh, so it was episode eight episode and nine. Eight. Like, okay. So Carly's married and already has a kid. Colby got married and now they're expecting their baby. Jagger got married to Gab Eli's dating serious, bro. When you gonna pop the question? I know Casey's listening, and she wants to know too. <laughs> Eli, when you gonna pop that question? Got to talk to her dad. I'm calling you out right now. But you know, it's just wild to look back and think of like those are just my little teenagers, you know. And right, now they right. got families and they're doing cool things. Or yeah, some are still here locally. Some are in, in other parts of the world and well, just doing their thing. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun doing that. But we you know to revisit what? that conversation. You know what else is fun? The what? fact that we have Morgan here <laughs> and we love <laughs> nice talking. Transition. We love talking about us. But we mm. want to hear about you and your background and, um, you know, the, this whole thing of LBGTQ lifestyle and, and especially the problems it presents in the church today. These are the conversations that we love having here on the podcast. Um, so can you kind of like walk us through like what your childhood was like and, and kind of what led into that lifestyle for you? Yeah, uh, for sure. So <clears throat> Um, one of the biggest, uh, defining parts of me that I like sharing with people is that I was actually homeschooled my whole life. Homeschooled. Um, I did not actually experience a public school type setting until I got into college. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, I, uh, a lot of my friends, uh, whenever, um, I meet somebody new and I express that they're just like, oh, that explains a whole lot. And I'm like, <laughs> what does that mean? What do you mean? And they're like, oh, you're just you're you're just pretty and i'm like uh oh okay <laughs> what does that um, even mean thank you <laughs> uh but it, it's really funny just because um that really had a lot to do with um who i am today um my faith with god the path that he knew i was going to go down and being able to experience the things that i did um if i wasn't i don't think i would have turned out the way that i have today um and so I'm super grateful for that. But yeah, so I was homeschooled. Um, I grew up with my mom, dad, and sister. Um, we were a very, very, very strong Christian family. Like I'm from Texas, Southern Baptist. Like I'm in the Bible loop. You oh know? yeah. So you're the middle of the Bible loop, yeah. man. <laughs> the, the very middle. So it's pretty much the same routine with church. Sunday morning, wake up, uh, go to uh, go to church, attend the uh, my mom and dad um, attended the grown-up service, um, yeah. and then my sister and I attended um, the service that was more specifically for like younger people. Mm. If that makes sense. Um, well, it was, it had, it a, was it a student ministry environment, or was it more of just like a children's church? Or no. So, um, so whenever we were super young, yeah, we would go to um, Sunday school, like mm -hmm. in the children's ministry. Um, uh, the the place that I was thinking about time wise, I was thinking about like junior high, high school, where oh, okay. they had a contempt. Oh, that's the word, a contemporary. Oh, yeah, service. yeah. Gotcha. So a lot more of the, I guess it could be considered edgy music. Uh, yeah, more it had, of the it had, a, it had a drum, uh, like a uh, hill song, Bethel, those kind of worship songs. Yeah. Um, my mom and dad attended the service that had more of the, um, of the hymnal oh the traditional yeah. stuff yeah Far away, you know that yeah, kind of right. stuff so um but every sunday morning we would do that um sunday nights my sister and i would whenever we were in junior high and high school we would attend awana um wednesday nights we would be at church um helping uh, um be lits for the younger kids so like cubbies sparkies um uh t TNT. Uh, I TNT. 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 I, I was like, baby, no, you're <laughs> in the right company, man. I don't remember. You're speaking our language. You used to be pals and pioneers and chums and guards and. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like, the majority of when I was younger, um, to junior high and high school, um, there was a consistent, a, a consistency of being in church, um, learning about God, um, and. Uh, you know, trying to maneuver um, through my struggles personally with going to church as well, because, uh, you know, it it was it's it was difficult 
when I was younger, because, you know, I was homeschooled, there weren't a lot of people that I saw on a daily basis. And so a lot mm -hmm. of my social interactions were done at church. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, and even still, like, I, I was like, I was, I mean, I'm still pretty weird, but I was really weird <laughs> when I was younger. Like, there's the homeschool. Uh, I, I would like, there would, there would be a group of people just talking, um, and randomly I just like pop up in the group and I'm like, Hey, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> and it, everyone would just be like, uh, Whoa. we're talking about this. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I'd bolt off. Like <laughs> I, that, that's all I would do. I wouldn't really do anything. Else. There goes that, there goes that Hello, homeschooler again. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> it, 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 there's the, there goes the pretty one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like when I was younger, it was just consistently being at church. Um, my, um, uh, so one, one of the things was, um, my dad also worked a lot. Um, and so the majority of growing up was, um, my dad being at work and living with my mom and sister. And that's one of the key points to remember, um, as I continue talking more about my story, mm. um, was my dad, while he was present, um, was more consistently working while I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of my childhood was being raised by my mom uh going places with my mom and sister having friends with my mom or my sister's friends like it was majority a group of females of being friends with uh guys i didn't fit in with the guys because i was i, I feel uh, that though because you were the pretty you know? one <laughs> I feel um, that. so yeah that was that that was pretty much my childhood um so would you say that that in your personal life was god a big big part of your personal life or did you feel like you were just kind of going through the motions in your childhood years or so i would definitely say that god was a big part of my life when i was younger um i remember whenever i got baptized when i was super young i mm. i want to say i was like I, I think i was six or seven um mm. if my mom listens to this podcast and that's not correct i'll <laughs> I'll, I'll be told Sorry, mom. what I was exactly. <laughs> Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> but I got saved when I was super young. I was super passionate. I was on fire about mm. the concept yeah. of being saved. Um, I think there's a really big difference between a person wanting to be saved and a person knowing they need to be saved. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> for me and um, my story, um, I I had a desire to be saved, but I didn't know truly how desperately I needed to be saved. Um, back then, it was uh, like I definitely had a passion for God and I wanted to be saved. Um, looking back on it, I, I realized that a portion of that was for um, looks. Mm. It, it was uh, it was because like my sister had gotten saved. Um, I want to say. Uh, under but roughly a year before i did um and uh, at that point i was like oh yeah well i want to be saved too you know yeah. um i remember one sunday morning it was uh my mom dad sister and i were sitting in the service and they were doing the lord's supper <clears throat> and uh, they were getting the communion and uh, i was like i want to do it and my mom's like, you can't do it. And I just start crying. Like, I felt so left out. I'm like, yeah. why can't I have a cracker and grape juice? This is unfair. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. But shortly after that, that's when um, I had talked to my mom and dad about wanting to be saved and then went through that process. Um, but uh, I remember, so this is where I've had um, conflicting uh, thoughts about it. I remember one night, I think I was about to like a, a year or two before junior high. I remember laying in bed and just staring at my ceiling. And I was like, I'm going to pray. And so I prayed and I was like, Lord Jesus, I pray that you give me a testimony that will bring people to you that will show how much you love us and how powerful you are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, I had no idea that God was actually listening and he was like, <laughs> okay, bet we're going to have an yeah, let's, let's go. Do this. Yep. <laughs> it was just like on one side, I was like, you know, it was really cool how I was, uh, I had such a desire for, um, God to create a story for me to share with people. And on the other side, I'm like, 
you stupid kid. Why would you say that prayer? <laughs> um, but yeah, for, for sure. When I was super young, yeah, God was definitely a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. Once I got into junior high and high school, um, whenever my struggles, um, with SSA started coming out, um, that's when there became a separation between me and God. Mm -hmm. Um, not as a, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Um, yeah. that's later in my life. Um, this was mostly um, a selfish viewpoint mindset about I'm worrying about myself instead of trying to seek and hear from God, if yeah. that makes sense. So so take us down the the journey of being in this this place during your junior high, high school years and, and kind of getting into the, the SSA and when you became fully aware um, towards those tendencies of, of SSA. Yeah, so... <clears throat> um, after after uh, moving back and being a part of the group that you had mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, um, I have I've been given an opportunity and I've been super thankful and blessed um, to learn more about where the roots of SSA actually start. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people assume that SSA is begins as a physical sin, mm -hmm. um, and I have come to strongly believe that it starts off as a mental sin. Mm -hmm. Um, which any sin, like, um, in the Bible, it talks about how God says, um, if you think about committing murder, you've committed murder, mm -hmm. you know, starts um, in the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus yeah, says, yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and so for me, um, I don't, I didn't think, um, solely on, oh, I'm going to go down this path. Right. Um, I remember one night, um, I was on my computer and I was on YouTube and, I, I don't know where the thought came from. I don't know why it popped in my head, but it popped in my head um, a thought of, I wonder what it's like for two guys to kiss. Mm. Like it, it, it was, it, it's, it was just this one simple, clear thought. I wasn't thinking anything previous to that. Um, I think I was watching anime um, on YouTube uh, mm. before that happened. And so I was just in my own little world. And then this one thought came into my mind and I was like, Oh, well, let's go on an adventure. Uh, I should have read the warnings of the adventure packet before I started it. <laughs> um, and so I went to YouTube and I started looking at videos. And I remember the first video that I watched, um, I, I, my eyes hurt. Like from the front of my eyes all the way to the back of my brain. Like there was a stabbing pain. Hmm. Um, and it was really weird to experience, um, immediately whenever I saw it, I closed the browser and I sat there for like five minutes and I'm like, okay, well, it really wasn't that bad. Um, mm. and so I went back to it and I watched more and then like a minute after when I first started, I turned it off and I sat there for another five minutes and I was like, okay, well, you know, they weren't really doing anything extreme. And it was, it was this continuous loop. Mm. of me closing the browser, sitting there for five minutes, thinking, oh, well, it's not that bad, and then reopening the browser. Um, at that time, I wasn't aware of, of how badly I was hurting myself with having those images in my head, um, nor at the time did I really think I, did I really understand the idea of attraction either. Mm -hmm. um, and and Morgan, so, if you don't mind me asking about, how old were you when that started? Um... <clears throat> If I'm allowed to ask. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think, 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 I think I was, I want to say about 13 or 14 years old. Mm, okay. Um, Isn't it and, fun, funny too, you know, I, I, I'm listening to you say that, you know, you started off a little bit and then you stopped and then a little bit more and stopped. And, and to me, that's, I feel like any sin, like, you know, if you listen to episode one, you hear my past, right? And my mm -hmm. past is full of heartache and, and bad, you know, I didn't read the adventure packet either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it's just curiosity that, and, you know, curiosity does kill the cat. But like, it's, it's you know, and, 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 and it's beyond that, right? Cause you, you think, okay, I'm just taking this little step and it's like, okay, well, nothing bad happened. You kind of look it around for the lightning bolt almost. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then, you know, just a little more and then just a little more curiosity and, uh, I feel like that's how Satan works in our lives, right? Is is that it's just a little bit at a time. He's not gonna be like, "Here you go, Morgan. You're you you know your same sex attraction. You, you know I fi figured it out." No, it's like, "Hey, I'm just gonna draw him in a little bit. Just draw mm -hmm. him in a little bit more." And, and like for my life, that's how I felt like it is, and that's what it sounds like you're saying for your life. It was kind of just, 
hey, here's just a little baby step, a little baby step towards that line. Another exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I like I definitely um, uh, thinking about like an imagery of it. It's like a father and a child and uh, the child and the father are holding hands and they're walking and the child sees something shiny like on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And so they like try and reach for it um, and they see that it's different and they kind of get scared. And so they come back and clean back to the dad again. Um, but they keep going back because it's that, like he was saying, it's that curiosity of the unknown. Right. Um, and I definitely feel like that's how the enemy uh, gets a hook in you is that he creates this question of, but what, what, what if, you know, um, what if you watched this or what if you kept watching it? Um, and so while, I was still going to church and I still believed in God. Um, I definitely created an unhealthy addiction to watching this mm -hmm. um, because shortly, like even, even though I didn't understand the concepts of attraction, um, I definitely knew that it made me feel different. Um, not so much just uh, physically, but also emotionally and mentally. Mm -hmm. um, after that first night, I remember times when I was at church and I, it felt like there was this giant wall that had appeared between me and uh, some of the people that I considered friends then. And it, it was, it was uncomfortable. I felt super isolated. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so I, that, that's, that is where it started. I didn't, um, I wasn't really looking at anything super explicit. Um, it, it was mostly like I had said, I wonder what it's like for two guys to kiss. Like that was the extent of where it started. Right. And that was, I believe that was how it was for about a year. Mm. That's all it was. I didn't go into any excruciating videos. I didn't want to, or I didn't really believe I had a desire to look at anything more graphic. Um, it was just that curiosity. Um, now, once I got into junior high, uh, like fully in junior high and I was about halfway through um, the fall semester. That's when it started actually becoming more real for me. Mm. Um, because I started, uh, I was hanging out at church with these guys and they, they 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 were changing um like physically they were changing you know puberty all that puberty yeah. Hits oh, and yeah. Stuff. yeah and so <clears throat> one of the biggest things that i realized so um one of my friends who i freaking love so much um he's actually someone that is consistent in my life now um and i'm super thankful that god was able to redeem that relationship him and his brother actually i'm pretty much friends with their whole um all the kids in their family mm -hmm. and so it was it was pr pretty cool um but it started off with this one guy and I noticed that um, he, he seemed different than how I seemed like the other guys that um, I was friends with. I, I saw that we kind of had more physical similarities. Uh, he was just different. Like he had like uh, stuff coming out of his face, like stuff coming out <laughs> of his chest and stuff. And I was just like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? You know? Right. Um, and, uh, at that point, that's when I realized that I didn't feel the same, that I felt different mm -hmm. because I'm seeing all these guys that were roughly the same age as me, how they were physically changing. And then me over here just being like, I don't wh what's going on. You know, like all these guys that I was friends with, they were like football players and sport uh, into sports and stuff. And me, I'm over here um, into music. Mm. Like their, their bodies are creating more muscle mass. And I'm over here, like have strong fingers as a <laughs> piano, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah you call me baby good. hands someday still fuller. <laughs> so I get it. Um, and that's, that's truly like, that was when it started. Um, that's when it started taking root and it started actually becoming an issue. So what was your, during that time of junior high, high school, what was your view of like the LBGTQ plus community? Like what I had, I, I, I I had no idea. It existed. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I had okay. no idea. Um, okay. So one of the things that um, I'm very thankful for was how protected my mom and dad were. Mm. So my mom was actually a, 
a school teacher. Okay. And uh, whenever they had my sister, they had noticed that the public school systems were reducing the allowance of teachers and disciplining students, mm -hmm. um, which just created kids who were super disrespectful, super um, misbehaved, causing a lot of mayhem in the classrooms. And my mom and dad talked and they were like, we, we don't agree with this. We want to make sure that we raise our kids the way that God calls us to raise them, to be mm -hmm. disciplined, to be respectful, to love, you know, all those key factors that um, even I believe in. Um, and so that's when they had decided to homeschool us. Gotcha. Um, so growing up, they were very protective on making sure to share the truth with us and also to create an environment where we could talk about whatever. Mm. Um, now, granted, any person that starts uh, developing a sin or a struggle, there comes a uh, reaction. Uh, the, 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 um, we understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there comes that feeling of shame and guilt right. and um, disgust. Um, so instead of me talking about this to my parents, I just didn't talk about it, you know? Right. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> no, no. We're no the story. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're in junior high. You're starting to yeah. realize that. And, and, and this is what I'm trying to, to, to process this. So you start understanding that, you know, some of the bros are becoming more bro bros. And then mm -hmm. some other dudes are just being different. So at what point did you start having the same sex attraction where you would look at guys or look at girls and be like, I don't like this, but I like this. Like, when did that start to show up more? Around that same time? Um, so... Yeah, that was that was definitely the same time. Um, uh, it was about halfway through fall semester of junior high, uh, my first year, and it wasn't so much. Uh, it it didn't start off with a physical desire. That's mm. one of the big things mm. that um, I kind of want to preface is that um, the the it didn't start with me struggling with the sin. It was a mental sin right. uh, to begin. It was the thought, um, and I think one of the places that it started growing was me comparing myself to others and not being happy with how I was mm. compared to other guys. So one of the best ways that I described it was um, I had this one friend. I was like, man, he seems so much more broski to me than I feel. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe if I hang out with him, maybe that'll, maybe that'll rub off on me, you know, uh, I had no idea why. I was just like, yeah, if I hang out with them, then I'll that's be That's a junior bro. high thoughts, yeah. But, you know? Um, and for a while, that's what happened, but it nothing changed. And then it finally got to a place where I was like, okay, well, if I can't have that for myself, then maybe if I'm with them, it'll satisfy me. Mm. Um if I spend all my time with them, if I talk with them all the time, um, pretty much if I go crazy about them, then I'll be satisfied. And that I feel is when it actually started turning into a physical attraction. Mm. Um, it, it was, it felt good to focus on their physical aspects instead of me comparing how I felt less masculine. Mm. So at the same sense. time, yeah, it does. So, so at the same time, um, and, and I'm, I'm again, curiosity here with this one, was that a level of you, as you got into high school too, and then that emotional, I would say that emotional connection became an emotional bond, which became a physical attraction with that. Was there also a very obvious where it's like, no, I, I'm just not attracted to girls either. Like, was it kind of a mixture of that too? Or was it more of, it wasn't one or the other. It was more of just. It was, the attraction it was more point. Of just guys. Gotcha. Um, so um, like I had said, I grew up with my mom and sister. Like mm -hmm. my dad was always at work. He was, he was a very, very, very godly man, constantly working to provide for his family. So uh, there was very few and far between opportunities for us to spend time together um, and we, we struggled with our relationship. I was a feeler and mm. he was a, this is what it is. Like, just, just how it is, you know, matter very black fact, and white. Yeah. Very matter of yeah. fact. Yeah. So, um, growing up with my mom and sister, I was more accustomed to how girls interacted, how girls shared their emotions, how they talked with one another, um, how they were super supportive and encouraging with one another. Um, and so that's what I was used to. And, uh, um, as these struggles with these guys came up, there there really wasn't. I didn't have those same like feelings 
like at all. And I don't think it was, I, I don't think it was specifically um, just the physical reaction that I was having with guys. I think it was because I felt more comfortable and it was more normal for me to see girls as sisters, mm. you know? Because that's what um, you had done all your life. I mean, exactly. You, you kind of see them as were, friends. Guys and, were right. unknown. Right. You know, gotcha. I was I was curious as to what was going on, why they were the way they were, and I was me. Right. Girls, I was just like, oh, I grew up with y'all. Y'all are nothing my friends, my sisters, know? my mom. Like this is what I know. Type exactly. Of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, even into junior high, like I I noticed that while yeah, I had like a few guy friends that I was like close with. The majority of my friend group it was easier for me to spend time with girls and talk to girls because mm. that was a normality for me. Mm-hmm. Guys, what? Yeah. Um, and I want to say that was, that, honestly, that's how I grew up as well. I mean, my dad mm-hmm. died when I was young as a kid. And so it was just me and my sister. My, my sister were BFFs. Like My sister and I are still great friends to this day. And so it was a lot easier to make those connections with girls than guys. So if people are listening, like, I can't connect. I'm connecting right now. Real so good. am I. I mean, I'm the same <laughs> way. Like me and my sister all through junior high, high school were best friends. Uh, my dad worked all the time. He was mm-hmm. constantly at work. So I get it, right? I, I, I understand. I'm tracking right there with you. Yep. Uh, yes, I'm glad I'm making sense. Yes. Yeah, I <laughs> so, got you. I got you. So how long uh, How long did this go on for, and, and where did it kind of oh, – so, so it started off – uh, a, a mental kind of thing and then went into a physical attraction and then you were fully immersed into it. And how long did that, that go on for? Like what, what was that lifestyle like for you? The full immersion of, Hey, this is where I'm at. And, um, you've made that plunge. Um, so, uh, the, uh, the explanation of plunge that I'm thinking is whenever the first time I actually did something with another guy, um that didn't happen until i was 16. okay and so from 13 up until i was 16 it was literally little gradual steps mental attraction trying to trying to comprehend what was going on sure not sure why i was different not sure why i was having these feelings or these thoughts feeling very estranged and different and isolated um while secretly um fighting off those estranged feelings by watching videos because at the time I could just watch a video and all those other problems of mine don't exist for those five minutes, right. you know? And so it definitely became an addiction because instead of um, being so overwhelmed with how socially I didn't feel like I was fitting in, mm-hmm. um, I could escape, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it, it was a consistent progression of me going to church, living a life of, oh, I am a hardcore Christian. God is everything to me. And then going back home, getting online and watching videos. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, the And I didn't even really, I don't believe I really even told anybody, not even my best friend. Um, it, I, I think I was about 15 whenever I first told my best friend. And I said that I was struggling with homosexuality. And uh, this was just after watching videos, seeing words and looking up what words meant and stuff. Um, The term homosexuality Um, at the time, LGBT was still non-existent in my, in my world because I, I had no idea that there was a whole group of people that felt the same way, you know, Uh, living in Texas in the Bible belt, there's not a lot of, people that are just like oh hi you know yeah, right so it, it definitely felt isolated um and how i didn't fit in um and there wasn't anybody that i could talk to about it like i like i had said i told my best friend um when i was 15 but that was that was it um i didn't feel like i could trust anybody else granted this is also the best friend that i was comparing myself with that i felt like if i hung out with them all the time that i would start uh growing those same physical traits and Mm -hmm. where a lot of the problems came in um i do however remember the night that i first told my parents that i was struggling Mm. um my mom and i were heading home from church one wednesday night and we were going to kroger to get ice cream a good night. Uh, it w- it would have been began, <laughs> beginning. Yeah, began as a great night. 
Um, there was this, um, there was a situation in the church where um, one of the members who grew up in the church that was seen as an extremely strong Christian, um, how they left the church and went into the gay, li gay lifestyle. And I was talking to my mom about it. I was like, hey, who, what happened to what happened to this person? And she talked and she was explaining and we were talking and stuff. And I was just sitting there like, wait, that's uh, people actually do that. Like I had, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so we get to the church, to the Kroger parking lot. And I remember I was just getting out of the car and running in to get the ice cream. Um, my mom said, Morgan, and I looked back at her and she looked at me straight in the eyes and she was like, are you thinking that you're gay? And I sat there and looked at her and then I looked at the front of the car and I'm like, how much do I want to gamble in telling her this? Yeah. And I looked back at her and I was like, I don't know. And then I got out, shut the door, went inside and got ice cream. <laughs> oh, um, by the time I got back to the car, I opened the door and I saw that she had been crying the whole time. Mm. Um, and I knew, oh, that was not a good gamble. Right. Um, and so we didn't talk. I don't think we talked at all on the way home from Kroger. We pull into the driveway. And at, and I'd like to also express that at this point in my, in my life, uh, my relationship with my dad was extremely bad. Mm. Um, we had a lot of difficulties with communicating with each other because my dad was very straightforward to, to the point black and white. Right. Um, I was more, let's talk about our emotions. Let's talk through the issues. I want to know where you're, where you, what you're feeling. And I want to express where I'm feeling, yeah. uh, which is very contradictory to how guys are in high school. Um, and so we're sitting in the driveway and my mom uh, says, you need to tell your dad. And uh, I was like, <laughs> oh, no, no. 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 Well, let me just it? give a description <laughs> of how my dad looked. My dad was six foot three, uh, like 300 to 350 pounds. Big, big, like, big dude. <laughs> like you, like people just looking at him at first glance are just like, <gasps> like terrified. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I ain't doing that. Granted, mama. Nope. He he's he was just a huge teddy bear. He loved everybody. Um, he lived by the um, values of loving people the way that God loved him. Mm. So he it, it was just like first looking at him, he's scary. Um, and for me, I was like. Oh, no, scary. We don't talk to dad about problems. We let dad go to work, come home, <laughs> sit in the chair, eat and fall asleep watching the late night show, you right. know? Um, and I was like, no, I, I, I don't want to. And she's like, Morgan, you need to tell him. And I was like, okay, you can tell him. I don't want a part of it. And then right. I slammed the car door. I don't know where this sassiness came from, um, but I don't feel like it was the smart decision. Yeah. Um, so I go inside. And uh, um, once you walk in the house as a living room, my dad's in the chair and he's like, hey, and I was like, hi. And I just walked past him and went to my room and shut the door. And I'm in there and I started like not like technically hyperventilating, but I'm just like freaking out, like panic attack to the max. Like, oh, my gosh, my mom's going to tell him, oh, my gosh, my life is over. Oh, my gosh, I'm never going to be able to leave this house again except to go to church. I am so <laughs> grounded. Screwed. Like, right. Yep. Like screwed. Well, then I hear a knocking on the door and I go and open the door and my mom is just standing there and she had changed from devastated, upset to rage. Like, oh, no. how dare you disrespect me? Right. Like, mm. this is something that we actually need to talk about. You can't just disappear. Um, she's like, go in there and talk to your father now. I was oh, like, man. <laughs> fine. And so I go into the living room. I sit down on the couch and my dad and I for about five minutes are watching TV together. He turns it off and then we just sit there in silence for 30 minutes, not talking or anything. It was the most uncomfortable well, 30 minutes goodness. I had experienced up to that point. Um, and this is where um, I was truly hit with shame, despair, um, and sadness was my dad just looking at me in my face and going, why? Hmm. 
And I'm like, what? And he's like, why are you doing this? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Why, why do you think this is okay? I, I don't know. What did your mom and I do? I, I don't know. He's asking all these questions that I didn't have an answer to because it wasn't anything specifically that they did to lead me into wanting or desiring this. Um, and so I was getting upset because he's asking all these questions and I'm like, I don't have an answer. Like, I, I can't tell you the reason because I don't know the reason. It's just like, oh, here, here's a leaf in your lab. There you go. You have a leaf now. Like, I didn't ask for the leaf. It just fell it there. Just you showed know? Up. Right. And if you don't um, mind me asking this, Morgan, because I, 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 I'll just say, we're going to make this thing a two-parter, bro, because this conversation is so damn I'm good. Sorry. No, no, no. no. We're this is freaking awesome. It, what but, are you talking about? But I want to make sure we get the full story, and I don't want to We don't want to rush you, so go ahead. Yeah. So so my question is to kind of like end this part of the show, and then we'll, we'll we'll go to Fun Facts with Fuller, and then we'll, we'll come back into part two, is how do you, like, like, I'm thinking for me as a parent, right? And, you know, I got all these kids, and the chances of one of them struggling with same-sex attraction and and dealing with it is it's a real it's it's a real life situation and and you kind of tell the sh and i love how you're sharing your story where i love it you're like oh no like it just it just happened like yeah. you, mom and dad you didn't do anything wrong i don't know what's happening right how did you obviously hindsight's 2020 but i'm just thinking myself as a parent i know you as a parent as well how would you have wished your parents reacted or responded to this that you think would have come across for you as more of understanding rather than you're, you're, what, what the heck is wrong with you, kid? So, uh, first, I'd like to say that there is not an instruction manual on how to raise a child other than the Bible. Right. Uh, the Bible is a great tool, but there is no how to raise your kids in 10 steps. Right. You know? Um, there is every kid's for different, sure, too, man. It's nuts. There is for sure not an instruction manual on how to raise your child who may be gay. Right. You know, um, so, my parents, I know without the shadow of a doubt that they had an undisputable love for me and my sister. Mm. They, it was unconditional. It never changed. They wanted the best for me. They tried the best as parents to raise me, knowing God, knowing how God loves me, um, and trying to encourage me to be the person that God wants me to be. Yeah. Um, but they didn't know. It's it's not something that they ever had to experience. I mean, my mom and dad grew up in the time where nobody talked about it. Like you don't yeah. talk about SSA whatsoever. Right. Um, and so it was really it was uh looking back on it, it was really hard with them trying to figure out how to maneuver this aspect of life of their son possibly being gay and not knowing what to do. Mm. Um so uh looking back on it, um it's it, it's it's hard to say honestly um i know that one thing that they did was that they had an un unshakable trust in knowing god had everything under control um whether they didn't see it whether um they knew exactly how it was going to play out they knew that he was in control that he had already seen the outcome that he had already seen the middle um and they had to choose to trust god and to continue loving unconditionally um, while also encouraging that this is not who I was, that this was this was sin corrupting the image of how God designed me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's rough. It, it was really rough. And I've apologized to them mm. multiple times. I'm so sorry. I was such a troubled child. <laughs> um because it was rough like i remember um my mom talking about nights when i was in junior high high school my dad just crying himself to sleep crying out to god um saying god what do i do how do i love him how do i talk to him um yeah it it was really hard um so i i don't really have an answer yeah. um especially not being a parent um i i don't i don't know i don't know what it's like to have a kid yet so yeah. Like that's still a whole nother mystery that I'm <laughs> right, not sure. ready for. When, yet. when, that, when you do, we'll bring you back. Yeah, guys. Right. You can give us all the secrets. <laughs> oh, part okay. Three. I appreciate the, that. I could definitely part three, the follow-up. <laughs> all right. 20 years later. Well, Morgan, we're going to go ahead and end it here at this point Ooh, in this juncture. We're going to put a pin in it. As we like to say, we're going to land the plane for a second. Uh, but we're going to have you back for part two to 
have the conclusion of, of where all this is going and, and the lifestyle and what God brings you through and, and where you're at today. Uh, Thank but, you so but much. But before for being, we do, we got to do fun facts with Fuller. Well, we do. I was just going to say thank you to Morgan oh, okay. for taking this time out. And I know we're going to go a little bit longer than what we had planned, but this is such a great story. Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> so, I'm here for it. And we appreciate you. you. Appreciate it. But let's go ahead and jump into fun facts with Fuller. Time for fun facts with Fuller. <laughs> That laugh gets me every yeah. time. <laughs> right. But bro, when are when are we gonna put Shiloh in the mix? I, one of these days. He's not ready. Yet. He's, He's not, not ready, ready yet. He 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 needs to work on his words a little bit more. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. So today's fun fact, Morgan, <laughs> is uh, scientists have taught rats how to drive like a car. Yeah. Well, kind of. According to an experiment, rats can learn to drive. Scientists made tiny cars with an aluminum floor and a steering Come wheel made on. out of three copper bars. When the rats stood on the car's aluminum floor and touch the copper bars, they would start an electric charge that moves the car. By the end of the experiment, they had taught the rats to steer the car in different directions by touching different copper bars. The secret? Fruit Loops. Oh, wait, the like the sci- cereal? The scientists conditioned the rats to maneuver different ways by rewarding them with the cereal pieces. You know, okay, so here's a question <laughs> I have. To make the car go, were the rats' bodies the electrical conductors, too? They were. That's what it was. So it was the floor, and then the current would go through depending on which bar they touched. Wow. So that's how they taught them I how to I want to know if the go. rats made it through that experiment, because well, that sounds a little traumatizing, man. It, it was man. probably low voltage, low amperage, so it was but probably all still, right. So, so basically, needless to say, if uh, someone ever walks up the street and is like, hey, do you want to learn how to drive a car with Fruit aluminum loops. foil Fruit loops. floor? That's how, you train, no. that's how you train everybody, Fruit Loops. That is I'm wild. I'm not going to lie for a second. When you said taught rats how to drive, I'm thinking how do they reach the pedal <laughs> <laughs> oh me too i'm like what's happening that's what it's a fun fact that well, is, like, a is it like a fact. horde of rats learning to drive like you have a horde of rats on the floorboard gas and brakes and the one on the stair one going bro <laughs> it's like yeah. straight up toy story man turn signal squeak squeak <laughs> straight up toy story but morgan thanks for being with us today we're looking forward to part two of the conversation Thank you. It's it's truly awesome to be here with y'all. All All right. Awesome. Well, hey, just like always, guys, we're going to end the show. We're going to get back to part two here in just a second. But just like always, leave a rating review anywhere you listen to podcasts. Spotify, leave that rating. Apple Podcasts, leave a rating review. Share this episode with someone or just the show in general with a friend that you think would enjoy being a part of the RTC community. And don't forget to go to our YouTube page, Real Talk Christian Podcast at YouTube.com. And and you can see me almost touch you. (laughs) And right now you can see That was a weird motion. I'm sorry. But go ahead and kick kick click that subscribe button and hit the bell notification Ding. so that when we're on you can see us you can hang on, out and with we're us. closer and we can blow you kisses like mark did earlier <laughs> that was her bad that was her bad all right guys wait we got part two to get to and so come back next week same time same place for part two of the conversation with morgan so until then guys take it easy